Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of DeLorean Tech, and today I'm going to walk you through the process of retrofitting the cigar lighter in the DeLorean to a dual USB voltmeter setup. So, I was able to retain the stock trim ring and basically just retrofitted it so that instead of a cigar lighter it has a uh, dual USB ports in here to charge your phone or tablet and it also has a voltmeter in here so it's got this little cover put that on there you can see when it's closed um, I was also able to preserve the cigar lighter illuminator so turn on the lights and I was able to get that going as well give you a little bit more light this is completely non-invasive it can be reversed 100% I still have the original cigar lighter itself None of that had to be modified. The only thing that really had to be modified was the electronics. I just had to dremel a little bit around some of the plastic parts in, it in order to be able to fit the electronics into the trim ring socket itself. As you can tell, it's pretty solid in there. Um, I'm pretty pleased with this. So the first thing you're going to want to do before you start uh, installing the socket is turn off the battery, disconnect the battery. You really should just do this in general for any type of electrical work. I recommend having one of these battery kill switches. They come in really handy. If, this, if you find that this is really difficult to remove, you can also undo the screws here that hold the shifter plate down and you can lift up on the shifter plate a little bit here so you can access underneath here and then just kind of help push it through the hole okay so here's what it looks like underneath so you can kind of get an idea of what you need to do here so that green plastic sleeve and then the actual socket itself all need to come out so this little red wire here, the red and orange wire, goes to the LED for the illumination. So you can just pull the LED out, and there it is right there. And then once that's done, you can disconnect the power and the ground cable, as you can see right there. So once you got that out, you can start taking out the little metal socket so you can use a really small screwdriver and kind of get it in there. There you go. Then you move to a larger. So now you've got the socket out. Pull that out, so there it is. Now you got your trim ring is still in there. That has to come out as well. And the best way to do this is there's a little tab right in there. You just push in, see how that goes in, and then you just pull out. You need to do the other side as well. This isn't that easy to get to. You want to make sure that you don't damage it. So you spin this around so you can get the tab on the other side. Do the same thing, just be very gentle, it's not that easy to, <laughs> to do. You might crack this thing. So now you can just take it out all in one assembly. Pretty easy to do. And now we can install the socket. Okay, so I went ahead and I ordered a couple of these on Amazon. I wasn't sure which one I wanted. I came down to these two, so I figured I'd just 
buy them both and send them the one I don't use back or use it at a different vehicle. I thought this one was kind of cool. It actually has a voltmeter display, a little LCD screen, um, and or an LED screen. It has a little LED screen right here, and it's got a stainless type finish to it, which I thought was kind of cool. This one has a USB 3.0 and then a 2.4 amp 5 volt USB port. And this one I thought was kind of cool. It was the only one that they had with three USB ports. So it's got two of the 3.1s and then it's got another um, quick charge 3.0 port right there. And I thought the green color was kind of cool because it sort of matches the green trim ring of the stock cigarette lighter. But we'll have to see how this looks inside the car. So those are the two I went with. They have a ton of different styles. Uh, some are illuminated all inside. Some have a little voltmeter um, display on there. But they connect the same way. You got a positive, negative. Pop it right in. Plug and play. You're gonna want to do some test fitting. So the threads on this one fits in okay. But we may need to open this up a little bit or sand down those threads if we don't end up using them. But we will see. This one right here, it'd be cool if you could just thread it in there. I don't think you can do that though. Problem is, there's like a, a metal plate underneath this. It'll be very difficult to open that hole up, so we'll have to figure something out. So the black wire is going to be negative. Plug that right in, and your purple wire is going to be positive, and that's hot all the time, unless it's been rewired so that it comes on with. The ignition. So I'm curious to see what that looks like. Oh, cool. Check that out. That looks pretty slick. It's got a green LED in there. I might have to go with this one. So now we want to make sure this thing works. So I am going to plug in a USB. Plug in my phone here. Oh yeah, it's charging. We have, it's working pretty good. The phone's charging. Fast charging, 100%. And there's this one, which is just slow charging. So that's working as well. Cool. And we'll disconnect this one and connect the other one. See how that works. Oh, wow, that's illuminated too. I didn't know that. Check that out. Got little green LEDs in there. So that's cool, didn't know that. A little surprise, it's not super bright or anything. Okay, so this project has taken a little bit of a turn. Since this one didn't fit without having to modify the opening, I could have also stripped these threads off, but I just didn't want to take the time to do that. I wasn't too keen on having the stainless there um, it wasn't really matching. So what I did was I actually removed the internals. So I just pried back the ends here with a pair of pliers. And so just like this. And then I pulled the internals out. And what I'm planning on doing is just retrofitting the original 
green trim ring to hold the USB internals. So what I did was, because this thing wasn't fitting like perfectly in there at first, so what I did was I just took a little bit of a, some material off with this Dremel. It was pretty easy to do. You could, The main issue were the little plastic tabs that are on top right here on this orange USB port and on this white USB port right here. So I just took a little bit of the material off and was able to get it in there from the top and just push that in a little bit. They didn't want to get it to where it's so loose that if I plugged in a, uh, a cable, it would push it through. So I got it in to where it fits in there pretty snug. And what I've done is this part right here is a little face plate for the front. Just put that over and then just push in a little bit until it stops. And what I'll do is I'll just glue the plate, the face plate on so it doesn't come off. And then the back end, it comes with this piece here. You just reconnect that. And now I have a retrofitted for USB. Um, I'm going to see if I can get the green LED light up feature to work with it as well since that's going to be there anyway. And what I'll probably do since this is the I decided to go with the one with the voltmeter display. Um, what I'm going to do instead of having a constant 12 volt going to it, I'm going to go ahead and use switched 12 volt power instead. See, So that's what I'm doing right now. Hopefully it works out. Okay, so it looks pretty good. Um, I tested it out. Everything's working properly. This is the little faceplate, and it's a little semi-transparent right there in the middle. So it <clears throat> brings the brightness down a little bit better. You can see the uh, little readout. And then we'll finish this all up and see if we can get it to fit. Okay, so what I've done now is I put the trim ring back in, and I'm gonna see how well this fits. So this is the internals right here. And the way it works is like this. There we go. And this should do it. Looks pretty good. It's okay in there. It's not rubbing on anything. Yeah, looks good. And here's the little plastic cover. I just glue that on. Not too bad. Oh, I just gotta get the green LED or the the trim ring to light up. That's going to be fun. So I got one of these DeLorean Go LEDs for the cigar light. Cigar lighter light. <laughs> so go ahead and put that in there and see what happens. Okay, so the next thing I did was I wrapped the internals of the USB charger in electrical tape and then I added a little bit of this cool tape on the side right here to increase the illumination for the cigar lighter illuminator and I also uh, extended the ground using this wire right here and I soldered that in because once you pull out the uh, stock cigar lighter there's no way to ground it if you're gonna use something like this so uh, I, what I had to do was 
take an extra piece of wire and I'm going to tap that into the ground and that's existing inside here so this ground right here and what I'm going to do with this is I'm not going to reconnect the constant 12 volt to it I'm going to tap into one of the green and you can see it in here green and white wires that are going to the various switches here the radio I don't have a clock but this could kind of take the place of having a clock. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire it into where the clock would have been and power it with switched power so that it turns on when I turn the ignition on and it turns off when I turn off the ignition. So for the illumination, what I'm gonna do is I've got the uh, DeLorean Go little LED right here and basically just connect it to I thought about running the LED full time but I'll just keep it the way it was intended so that this wire here for the the illumination for the cigar lighter comes from the parking lamp circuit so when you turn the lights on then this turns on Okay, so here's the circuit that we're working with. This is the cigar lighter. This is the cigar lighter illumination. Here's the clock that I don't have. Here's the radio with the speakers. You got an inline fuse here. The green and white wire is the accessory power wire. So that turns off when you turn off the car. So what I plan on doing is instead of having this clock here, I'm gonna have the USB charger uh, I'm not going to be connecting a purple wire to it because I don't need to. It's not acting like a clock. It does have the uh, little voltmeter in there, but the only thing I'm going to need is the light green and white wire that's coming from this hub right here and the ground wire, which there's already a ground here. I'm probably going to end up using the cigar, cigar lighter ground that's already there. It's easy to access. So I've got all my connectors and wiring all ready to go. Everything's all laid out. I'm actually doing two videos at the same time. I'm also installing a USB Bluetooth in the car at the same time as retrofitting the cigar lighter. So just in case you see a couple wires, I'm connecting them all together. I'm also gonna run an, a separate inline fuse just to be on the safe side. I'm gonna tie both the cigar lighter and the Bluetooth power source into this and tap into the light green and white wire that's right there with a side tap. And then for the ground, I'm just gonna side tap into the existing ground over here. It's just easier to get to. So I've got both of my side taps in. So I side tap to the green and white wire, the light green and white wire and I side tap to the ground over here. That's the ground that goes with the cigar lighter, so I'll be using that one. So I've got my power wire set up with my fuse. This is gonna be connected to the USB and the cigar lighter here. That's gonna be the power source. So for the cigar lighter, the constant 12 volt connector right here, I went ahead and just electrical tape that off completely because that one is always hot and you don't want a short or anything to develop because this also goes to the radio so for the cigar lighter you're going to want to insert the trim ring first and then insert the usb charging electronics from underneath because it's because of this right here. I actually tried to remove that. It was very difficult, didn't want to break it. This is the housing for the cigar lighter illumination bulb. So I usually orient it so that this part is down and not like rubbing against here. So this part right here underneath, just pop it in, good to go. So it made my power and ground connection to the USB charger. Next I'm going to want to insert the cigar lighter illumination bulb from underneath. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that next. Okay, so I got the illumination ring. It actually looks okay. The LED in there. And I'm testing out the USB charger. So I've got the key in the ignition. And that just turned on. Okay, so I've got everything installed. Looks okay. This little cover here, I'm probably just gonna um, maybe put a little bit of glue on there. That way it holds it in place, because really is no other way to hold it in place other than just gluing it a little bit on there. But it does cut down the brightness quite a bit. I know it's kind of hard to tell with the camera, but when you put this over it, it really does cut the brightness down. This thing is like really bright, and it's probably going to be a little distracting if I just kind of kept it like this. Although I've thought about it, it does look kind of cool, but we'll see. Okay, so here's what it looks like with the waterproof protective cover on. So... I might keep it like this. I actually kind of like how that looks. It adds a little bit more of a cigarette lighter type look to it. Plus, you can see through the screen. It's got a little transparent screen right there, a little window that you can kind of look through. And when you're ready to rock and roll, you just open it up. Plug it back in and good to go. And you can still catch some of the uh, trim ring illumination in there. It's kind of cool. I've got the lights on right now so you can kind of see the trim ring in there. The illumination. So I might just leave it like that. Protects it a little bit too. Battery starting to drop a little bit. Been doing a lot of electronic insulation today. So I ended up turning this around so that the illumination was more up on the top as opposed to down underneath. So it looks a lot better that way, I think. Because unfortunately, the light and the little LED can't get all the way around. Maybe later on. In the future, I'll add another LED down here so we can get a full ring. And it'll look a lot better, but for now, that's pretty much what we got to work with. So I tested the USB connections. Works great, charges. So I tested the USB ports here, and everything's working great. The fast charger's working awesome. This is just a standard, I think it was like a, a four amp charger. Um, so it uh, works good. And uh, for whatever reason, the voltage kind of went back up again. So just reading battery voltage right now. And uh, yeah, this fit in pretty good. So you can either go with or without. Without, again, it's very bright. And I'm going to probably glue that on. Anyway, guys, that's the video. If you got any questions, just drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching.